With the top end complete, we need to finish up the main bed area of the Prusa Mark IV S now. So on we go with the LCD assembly. So delve into the plastic parts box for the bag of LCD parts, into the large electronics box for the cables bag, and the smaller electronics box where we'll find the actual XLCD panel itself, securely packaged and wrapped in protective bubble wrap. Anyways, with all that to hand, we're going to start with the new injection molded LCD cover itself. Looking on the inner side, note the recessed channel across the inside bottom edge, specifically in place for an adhesive reflector. So go ahead and carefully peel back the adhesive sticker before positioning the reflector strip over the recess, making sure you press the strip right down into the recess as you move along. With that in place, back to the LCD board now, as well as the rear cover. Holding from the edges, slide the display board into the notches in the top of the rear cover and seat the board down into place in this orientation, so the control knob on the right side, before removing the plastic protective film and lowering the top cover down into place. Flip the assembly over and secure from the rear using three 3x8 three screws, one in left bottom and two in the right side. Note these cut threads directly into the plastic as you screw down so some resistance may be felt. Do not over tighten and risk stripping the created threads, a nice snug fit is all that's required. I like to reinstall the plastic here just to offer the screen a little protection while constructing. Anyways, back to the rear, that just leaves our last open corner here. Insert a final 3x8 screw, complete with a metal fastener to secure down into place. Again we're screwing directly into the plastic here. We'll get the cables attached next, namely the display ribbon cable and PE fastener. Starting with the larger display ribbon cable, although you can use either end if you have a white label on one end, use the end with no label. This is purely for aesthetics. Either way, note the safety latch on one side of the connector. This must be plugged into the side of the LCD slot marked with the triangle on the board. Double check your cable is connected in this orientation, as otherwise your display won't work. Finally, slide the PE cable onto the metal fastener in the top corner. As a last step, attach the control knob to the front of the assembly, noting the flat area of the shaft, which will line up with the flat section in the knob. This is friction based, so simply push down into position. The orientation of the knob doesn't matter at this point. Display assembly now prepared, and we can go ahead with getting this connected to the main printer. At this point, using a 3x12 screw, drive the screw into one of the four available holes in the rear of the display assembly, and then remove. Repeat the process for each of the available holes. This simply creates the threads within the plastic, making installation to the frame easier, which is precisely what we'll do next. Begin by inserting four 3x12 screws into each of the available holes from the inner side of the front plate of the frame. So that's the side with the longer leg extrusions. Now guiding the LCD and PE cables under the plate, bring the LCD assembly towards the frame and secure using the four inserted screws, going straight into the holes we pre-threaded a moment ago until nice and snug. With that secure, guide both LCD cables through the cable clips on the inside of the frame and back towards the electronics box. That's the LCD assembly pretty much done at this point, so we'll go ahead and move our attention across to the power supply area. You'll find this easier by repositioning the printer onto its side, with the power supply facing upwards. Begin by removing the left screw on the PSU circuit board. Note there is a washer on the screw, so take care not to lose it. Next, we place the single end of the PE cable onto the same place we just removed the screw from, Note that the flat side of the end connector should lay flat down on the board, before securing into place by reusing the screw together with the washer. While tightening, guide the cable so it does not interfere with the threaded column just beneath it. We're now ready to install the main power cables. Notice how one end of the cables incorporates a round connector, while the other end incorporates a fork. It's the fork end we'll be concentrating on for the moment. Taking a closer look at the fork, Note how the tips are slightly bent in one direction. 
When installing these fork ends, always ensure the tips are facing upwards and away from the board. So with one cable in hand, loosen the first screw, no need to remove it completely, just loosen. There's a square washer beneath this screw, guide the fork from the red cable beneath the washer. Remember the tips on the fork should be facing upwards. Once in place, proceed to tighten the screw down, taking care to be firm yet gentle, since we don't want to break any plastic parts from beneath. Repeat the same process with the black cable, although this time we're securing it into the third connector along, and remembering to go under the washer with the fork tips facing upwards. Secure down into place. So at the moment, we've connected one power cable, red into the first slot, and black, or red and black striped, into the third. Repeat the same process with the second power cable, securing red into the second slot and black into the final slot. Take a moment to double check the connections here, it's very important they are correct as incorrect connections could cause major damage to the printer. So red in slots 1 and 2 and black in slots 3 and 4. With these double and triple checked, reach for this power panic cable and connect the black connector at the end to the available socket on the right side of the power supply, while routing the cable so it meets with the existing bunch. Finally, place the PSU cover over the power terminals, making sure the Prusa logo is facing upwards, and also making sure the cover is seated properly and no cable is being pinched underneath, before attaching the cover by using the two M3x10 screws through the marked openings, Bear in mind the openings are quite deep, so secure until snug. Once in place, looking from the bottom of the power supply, guide all the cables through the two cable clips installed earlier. Sticking with the underside here, and specifically the Z-axis right motor cable, insert a zip tie through the holes in the frame and proceed to close the end very loosely to create a loop. This can get a little fiddly, but persevere and tighten the zip tie just enough to keep the motor cable nicely tucked under the frame. I've placed the printer on its back here, but continue downwards and using another zip tie create the next loop in the frame. Guide the Z-axis cable and all cables from the PSU through the zip tie, trying to place the PE and power cables at the bottom of the bundle. Before tightening the zip tie so it's snug and holding the wires, again be careful not to over tighten the tie as it can cut wires. Continue guiding the cables along the frame and towards the electronics board. This time include the wire motor right cable into the bundle. Secure it with another zip tie to the frame in the same fashion as previous. With that done, carefully guide and fold the LCD ribbon cable under the cable bundle without adding it in for now, so leave it free. Although we do need to include the PE cable in with the existing bundle, so proceed to do just that and secure the cable bundle with a zip tie. Before bringing the cable across and up towards the electronics board. Here we need to start connecting into the board. Begin by attaching the PE cable connector to the right lower screw hole in the XBuddy box. Again be careful with orientation here, the flat side of the connector needs to lay flat on the board, using a single M3x6 screw, complete with an M3 washer in between. Tighten the screw firmly, while making sure to guide the cable so that it does not interfere with the threaded hole under the electronics board. We'll connect the power panic cable next, to the white connector on the bottom of the XBuddy board here, just above the previously installed cable. Before moving on to the four power cables, these have circular connectors, so the screw will pass completely through. So, using the supplied power terminal screws, we start with red, then black, then red, and the final black, making sure all terminal screws are firmly tight, as with the power supply, double check to ensure cables are installed in this orientation. Incorrect wiring can cause major damage to the printer. Take the chance to now secure all cable paths using zip ties to the cable clips, the power cables, PE cable and the power panic cable in one bundle, and the LCD ribbon and motor cables on the right next to the frame since these will go further up the side of the electronics board. Onto the left Z axis motor cable now, and just like the right we have some holes in the frame to insert a zip tie, 
before carefully tightening and clipping off the end in order to hold the motor cable neatly in place. The bottom of the unit should now look relatively tidy. So let's get everything else connected in now. Start with the X and Y motor cables, which go into the two remaining ports across the top of the board. So from right to left, we have the Z right, then Z left, next is the Y cable, and finally we have X. Next we'll move to the large LCD display ribbon cable up the side of the board and into its slot just here. Again the safety latch on the connector fits into the top side of the port in this orientation. With the LCD ribbon cable covering the motor cables, secure into the side of the chassis with the bottom two zip ties installed very early in the build. Take care not to over tighten and then very carefully clip off the ends. So all that's left is the main extruder cable which connects into the remaining slot on the right side of the board. After which we can neaten the cabling and tighten the cable bundle with the two upper zip ties, again taking care not to over tighten the zip ties and carefully snipping the ends of the ties. And that's it, we're done with the LCD assembly as well as most of the cabling coming back to the electronics board. Join me in the next chapter where we'll continue with the final Y axis as well as getting everything wrapped up for build completion.